Miracy. I'm Daniel Mangina, and you're listening to Making It. I run a business called Dreamer HQ, and we support people in accessing and activating their natural state of abundance. Growing up, I had very mixed messages around money in the home. My parents are very conservative Christians, and so I was one of the money is the root of all evil households. And it's fascinating that even though I had that very vocal, it wasn't even a subliminal or under the radar. It was very, very clearly, money's a root of all evil. Just go to church, be a good Christian. That was it. And yet I still had this hunger for success. My entrepreneurial journey started before I was 10 years old and continued. I've never really had a job. And yet that narrative, I believe, had a really big impact on what happened to me as I got older and actually started self-sabotaging around my success. My parents emigrated to the UK, to England, from Zimbabwe in Southern Africa in the late 70s. And they didn't do it as economic migrants, which has been all the rage going into the 90s and beyond. They literally moved to the UK because they wanted to advance themselves educationally and had kind of reached as high as they could back home in Zimbabwe. And so my dad came to pursue, I believe it was his master's, and then he went on to get a PhD another degree, a law degree and another master's or something like that. And my mum got her master's. My mum worked as a civil servant up until she retired and worked very hard at that. My dad is now 70, I think he's 78 years old. They've both retired to Zimbabwe and yet he couldn't sit around doing nothing. He just started a new farm bought another farm and he's doing livestock farming in Zim, which is great because I get to invest in it and it's really good business. But yeah, he just doesn't seem to want to stop. And my mum, we had to bully her to stop. As a civil servant, she got to retire when she was 64, I think, 64 or 65 with a full state pension plus a private pension. And yet she still went and got a part-time job because she couldn't sit around doing nothing. (laughs) My mum was off doing a a part-time job. And then we were just like, mum, could you just like stop? please just stop. With my mum's kids, there are five of us. My dad's got some other kids, but there are five of us. And we're like, just, can you stop, please? You bought a house in Zim. Go and relax. (laughs) So I made a lot of money when I was like 19 years old. I actually made my first million when I was 19. I actually ended up losing everything because I quite ridiculously didn't have all the right paperwork and stuff for my business. And so everything ended up getting seized. I was 19, 20. So I think by the time I turned 20, I was a millionaire for about six months or something like that. I wasn't really that phased at the time because I still had the arrogance of youth. And so I went off and went and created again. And the second time everything got stolen by people that I trusted. And it was reflecting, I would say in the last seven or eight years that I've kind of geared up to being the person I am today in terms of really being open to sharing my story and and sharing my experiences with others so that they could learn from my mistakes, I've seen that there is a clear line between successful people, their attitudes, behaviors, narratives, and even the environment that they're used to and people who end up sabotaging or losing their success. What I've seen in tracking successful people is that there's a really clear line between their success And their emotional ability to hold success, the mindset that allows them to sustain success, but also the habits, behaviors, and environment that allows them to sustain success. Growing up in a household where you were told money is the root of all evil, you're not going to be able to hold the emotional frequency or the emotional state of being able to sustain wealth for any period of time. The unconscious mind moves at 10,000 to 10 million times the speed of the conscious mind. And such a narrative, such a story being perpetuated for years is going to rub off and lead to unconscious habits and behaviors that are going to sabotage. In my case, I didn't stop, maybe explore whether I need a license for this. Maybe I need a license for that. Maybe I need some support. And the habits and behaviors and able to have an environment, people, places, and things that can support financial success, I just didn't have. I think when I look at the ability to, since those two losses, have two back-to-back businesses that can do six figures a month, you know, seven figures plus a year, And also now being able to support countless people in creating that for themselves, I see the importance of not just the thing, but also the mindset that can sustain the thing and also the emotional state that can sustain the thing. Entrepreneurship can be a very challenging road. And if you're not approaching it 
from a place where you're supported and where you're going to have the resources within yourself and from without yourself to get to the finish line, then you're just not going to make it. I think it's 75% or something of, of businesses, you know, that they're shut down within five years. And, you know, that goes up within 10 years. That doesn't say anything for the people who are just eking a living. I think the stats in the US are something like 60 something percent of businesses aren't even making six figures. And when you actually think about what six figures is, six figures, 100,000, that's 8,333 monthly. That's just over 2,000 a week. Most people are running an enterprise that can't even scratch together two grand a week. Now, when you listen to those numbers, some people who have got a job might say, oh, that's a lot of money. But when you think a business is serving people, it's the enterprise that should have the capacity to go and pay out salaries of 100,000. And yet such a high percentage of them aren't actually doing it. And so I think some key things are people overestimating their capacity to do things by themselves and underestimating just how much is going to have to go into changing the way that you think about money and life, changing the way that you feel about money and life, and learning to apply the skills that you do have and to gather the new skills that are going to take you to success in your business or entrepreneurship. The way that I define making it is having clarity of the vision that you want for your life on your own terms and having the resourcefulness to be able to live life on your own terms. Now, for some people, that might mean leaving the quote unquote rat race. Some people, it might mean just changing the way that you operate in your job so it doesn't feel like a rat race. Not everybody's going to be making it by going to start their own business because not everybody perhaps is a business owner. Some are excellent operators, but that doesn't mean that life can't be lived on your own terms. So for me, again, making it is clarity about the vision that you have for your life, what it looks like, what it feels like, the people, places, and things that populate it, and then having sufficient resources to live that life on your own terms without someone else dictating your ability to do so. It took all of the twists and turns, all of the bumps in the road for me to have the level of humility that I have today. I was an arrogant little toe rag that led to a lot of the challenges that I had in my youth. It was the humility that came from my experiences that allowed me to be a better version of myself. I think we can look at situations and we can suffer by judging ourselves for them, beating ourselves up, going into blame, guilt, and shame. Or we can take those experiences, grow from them, learn from them, and become a better person as a result. Every single twist and turn has contributed to me being a better person and will continue to do so. From that standpoint, I'd say I wouldn't change anything. I think in terms of my journey to making it, one thing I just want to make sure that I really highlight and that people don't miss is the importance of living your own journey and not trying to do things on other people's terms. I'm Daniel Mangena and you've been listening to Making It. You can find me at www.dreamwithdan.com. That's www.dreamwithdan.com. Making It is part of the Mirror CFM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Course Lab and Just Between Coaches. This episode of Making It was assembled by Jeff Govertson. Cynthia Lamb produced the episode. Danny Berman is our associate producer. Danny Innie is our executive producer. Post-production was by Post Office Sound. To catch the great episodes that are coming up on Making It, go ahead and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you liked the show, please leave us a starred review. It's the best way to help us get these ideas to more people. Thank you. We'll see you next time.